How you guys doing today? We gonna bring the spots up? Lights, yeah, there's my lights. Woo! Let's hear woo! Yeah! Yeah! Are you guys pumped? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Go, Tom, go! Go, Tom, go! Just when you thought America's supply of heroes was running low, along comes our next guest. Do please welcome our warrior of the day, Tom Jones. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think Tom Jones is probably one of the greatest athletes I've ever seen. Uh, Tom Jones is a force of nature. To call him a super athlete may be an understatement. Tom Jones has a heart like a lion. Tom Jones is a leader. He can do anything he sets his mind to. Unbelievable will, unbelievable tenacity. You know, what do you do with this guy? Go, Tom, go! Meet Tom Jones, world record ultra endurance athlete, seven time kickboxing champion, child advocate. Go, Tom, go! Motivational speaker, humanitarian, Marine honor graduate, celebrity personal trainer. Tom Jones is an enigma. My body never goes to a level where it's comfortable, ever. Tom is arguably the greatest athlete to tread North American soil and water. Jones is the only athlete in the world to hold multiple world records in explosive sports and multiple world records in endurance sports. And that leaves Jones in a category all his own. Simply put, there is no one quite like Tom Jones. some of this right here. Woo! So, yeah, how, who in this room would like to have one of these? Let me see you raise a hand. Who's, who's, who's the man in here? Who wants one of these? Who wants seven of these? How about seven? Who wants to put one on right now? Who wants to try this on? Who wants to try this thing on? Huh? How about you, Mr. Pointer? You, come here, the guy pointing at the other guy. Yeah, that's always the guy we want, right? We don't want the guy pointing at the other guy. We don't want the guy sitting there quiet. We want the guy wanting to volunteer the other guy. Okay, so you hold on to this. And... All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. Champion of the world. Right here. Now, we gotta do the whole thing. Raise your hand up like a world champion. Show us. Give us the face, the mental attitude of a world champion. Show us what it is. Walk over here, show these guys. Champion of the world, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't it be great to have one of these? It's real easy to wear, but it is real tough to get, right? So, the reason I'm here today is not because I talk a great game, it's because I play a great game. So, to talk about it, I gotta take you on the journey of my life. Like you, I come probably, like a lot of you, I come from a place that's not real um, glamorous. Um, the first memories I have of my mom, my mom was mentally insane. She was completely unavailable. The first memories I have of her is her having a gun to my head, thinking that God told her to kill me and being rescued from that. My father, my father had cancer, kidney disease, and tuberculosis all at the same time. He had three kids and he had a wife that was clinically insane. He knew that he would not be around to raise his kids. He was determined to make me a survivor, to make me the toughest person alive and able to survive on my own, which was a great thing to want to do. Unfortunately, his methodology was a little bit questionable. He was a very abusive man. My early memories of him was always beating my mom beating my mom ruthlessly. I never saw my dad hit my mom with an open hand one time. It was always with a fist, a knee, an elbow, slamming her head in the refrigerator, doing things like this to her on a regular basis until, until the state of California came up to my house one day after he beat me severely with a cane, black eyes, you name it, bleeding inside, needing to go to the hospital. The police came to my front door and they said you had to come with me. I fought the police. I fought them, fist fought them. I didn't want to leave my house because it was the only house that I knew. I had moved 35 times from the time that I started to school to the time that they removed me from my house and, and they put me and they made me a ward of the state of California. I went to a temporary care facility there 
After that, I was placed in a children's home for disposition. Unfortunately, that children's home was very, it was a really nice place, but it was very, very poorly run. It had child molesters that were, were house parents, and the kids were very, very mean. And I fought many times. I fought one, two, sometimes three times in a day. Unfortunately, I only ended up with a sixth grade education. I was pushed through school until about the 10th grade until I couldn't go to school anymore. The children's home said, if you don't go to school, you can't live here. At that point, I was out on my own on the street. I stayed out on the street for about a year and a half until I was lucky enough. I slipped on a banana peel and I kind of landed in a platinum mine. It was a green platinum mine. It was called the United States Marine Corps. The United States Marine Corps was great for me at the time because they had everything that I needed. They were a great parent. I had never been rewarded one time in my life for doing something positive with a positive reward. Everything, every time I did something positive with my dad, and I don't know if a lot of you people, or a lot of you guys, a lot of you men are like me, but a lot of times when I would go do something positive, my dad would not give me a positive reinforcement. He'd give me a punch in the face and tell me I should have done it better. So that was what I was faced with when I was taken out. I was put in a home. The home was full of pedophiles, child molesters. And instead of going to school, I was up with the house parents late at night doing things that weren't inappropriate. So at 10th grade, I was out of there. I finally joined the Marine Corps. And they taught me right from wrong. They gave me values. They taught me about integrity. They taught me about esprit de corps. That means get behind something that you believe. They taught me about mental strength, and when I excelled, they rewarded me. I graduated number one out of 3,000 men in boot camp, and then I went to advanced training. I graduated number one out of 12,000 men at that point. And I went in the Marine Corps, and I did things in the Marine Corps that were Marine-like, and it was a lot of the combat. When I got out of the Marine Corps, there were no more combat. No more combat. When I got out of the Marine Corps, and I got back out in the civilian world, and I tried to get a job with my sixth grade education, and my job skill of, let's just say, Killing other people? There wasn't really much call for that. So I struggled. I was very fortunate. I ended up, uh, well, then I went in and I said, what am I going to do? I'm going to fight. That, that worked for me before. I started fighting, 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 winning championship after championship. Every time they raised my hand, it was great. But after 75 fights and only losing four of those, I still didn't feel good for some reason. I didn't feel great about myself. I felt great for a second when they raised my hand in the ring. And then I just felt terrible again, an empty feeling, like a hole inside me, like, sort of like I was dead. Uh, and then I was doing a lot of bodyguarding. And I bodyguarded this guy here in Orange County who owned the largest computer memory funding company in the world, just a big, huge company. And I bodyguarded this guy because people would kidnap hit people like him and their family and hold them for ransom. So I traveled the world, and I bodyguarded this guy, and he had a big sales force. Okay, and, and what he did was he would bring in motivational speakers to speak to a sales force because they wanted to make more money. Well, I attended those motivational speaking seminars, every one of them. And those motivational speakers, they talked about getting outside of yourself, doing things for other people. You would feel gratified. They talked about their experiences, a guy that was a prisoner in World War II and how they had to tap out and talk to each other and all of these extraordinary things. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm the only fighter that loves to train. I'm going to run. I'm going to run a long way, and I'm going to raise some money for a playground in Orange County here for an immediate care facility like the one that I went to when I was removed from my home. I was going to buy them a playground. So I dreamed up that I was going to run from Oregon to Mexico. I was going to raise some money, and I was going to buy them a playground, and that's exactly what I did. And let me tell you something. When I went and I got that playground, it felt good. To watch those kids in that home, the same as me, Get something that I didn't have felt good to me. So I did it again. And I bought a baseball field. And I did it again and I bought a shaka field. And I did it again. The day that I did the marathon and the Muay Thai in the same day, I walked over and I handed my check to the children's home and this immediate care facility. And let me tell you something. UFC superstars wept. They cried. They came up to me and they told me what a good guy I was and how that touched them because they came from the same type of places and the same hardship. So I kept doing that again and again. And then I thought to myself, wow, this is great. I'm going to prove that I'm a great athlete and I'm going to go out. So then I ran the United States. I ran 121 marathons in a row. And I did it again for abused and neglected women and, and uh, abused and neglected kids and battered women. I bought a bunch of women vans that they didn't have before, and it felt great. So then I was going to go do something that was instant gratification because all I did was suffer, 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 and I got one minute of, yay, I'm here. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go do that surfing thing. I live here in Huntington Beach, 
and I tried surfing before with all my friends and it was fun. I actually caught a wave, I'm gonna do that. Unfortunately, one thing about the surfing thing that I was worried about was I really sucked at surfing. <laughs> I was horrible, I sucked at it and I got driven a few times and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna hire someone to teach me to surf. So I did that and that person said, you know what, we've gotta go on these things called paddle boards and we gotta paddle and we gotta gain strength and we can match the speed of the wave and then we can surf and I said, okay, let's go do that. So we started paddleboarding in the harbors and waterways here in our local areas and the next thing you know, I realized that I'm face first in the liquid landfill. There's nothing but trash in this, these waterways. Is anybody doing anything about this? I had no water experience. Remember, I sucked at surfing. I hired someone to teach me. So I saw in a magazine, I said, who's this guy? Very early on, and they said, this guy's Laird Hamilton. He's the greatest waterman in the world. I said, I want to meet him because the stand-up paddleboard thing he's doing is really cool. It's ergonomically correct. My neck hurts, blah, blah, blah. I meet this guy who happens to be the greatest waterman in the world. We sit down. We look at each other. I look him right in the eye. And I said, hey, don't you hate people that have agendas? And he said, what? I said, don't you hate people that want to be your friend for some other reason than wanting to be your friend? He goes, yeah. And I go, good. I have no interest in being your friend whatsoever. I want you to teach me to stand up paddleboard. He goes, why? So I told him, I said, the environmental impact of this and the, blah, blah, blah. I went down the risk of why I wanted to do it. And he looked at me and he said, well, I guess we could share the Aloha spirit with you. And I looked at him and I said, what's that? And he laughed and laughed and he said, it's sharing, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, there's one last thing I have to tell you before we go do this paddleboard thing. He said, what's that? I said, I'm scared of the water. He said, you're scared of the water and you want to paddle from Oregon to Mexico? I said, yeah, I'm scared of the water, but I want you to teach me how to do it anyway because this cause is worth it. I'm willing to go do whatever I have to do to learn how to do this paddleboard thing even though I suck, I have no water experience in it, nothing. So uh, what did I do? I went and I checked my resources, okay? I didn't start my journey until I was over 30 years old. I had tremendous problems from all the dysfunctionality I had in my youth. You, on the other hand, have a huge advantage, okay? You're young. You can get it together now. You've got nothing but resources all around you. I took a, a walk around this school before I came in this room, and let me tell you something. You've got a great swimming pool, <laughs> among other things, all right? You have a lot of resources here. The only thing that it is, is is that it's on you. Straight up, I'm just telling you right now, it's on you because it was on me. I'll tell you exactly how to do it. We're going to do the crash course right now. You want to know how to be successful? I'm going to tell you how to be successful. The number one dream killer that I've come across so far is distraction. So whatever you do and whatever goal that you set in your life, because it's great for people to get up here and tell, talk a good game and talk and motivate, 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 but how? How do I do it? Well, what you do in the way that I do it is I make my why, my goal, so strong that no matter what comes up to distract me, because let me tell you something, I think we all know this, we're men here. We're men, okay? The, every day something will come up to distract you and take you off your goal so make sure that your goal is strong enough so no matter what no matter how hot that girl is you're not going to get distracted off your goal no matter how cool that car is no matter how fast it goes you're not going to get distracted off your goal no matter what happens you're not going to distract it off your goal because let me tell you something you are going to be challenged so make your why strong enough so no matter what you'll figure the how out that's my coin statement i make my why so strong, I make it so desirable. What I want, I want so badly, I'll figure out how to get it done. Okay, and there ain't nobody sitting in this room that's not resourceful and can't figure out how, how to get it done because personally, I'm always, I'm always surprised how drug addicts, thieves, white collar criminals can pull all this stuff off. It takes critical thinking, it takes strategic thinking, it takes resourcefulness. We all have it inside of us, it's just a matter of whether you got the guts to reach in and grab it yourself or not. That's what it boils down to. Are you a man? Prove it. Prove it. Okay, because we're at the point in our life right here, this is what we call a seminal moment right now. You're at the point in your life, whether you pull it together or you don't, because I'm telling you right now, the world don't care. The world doesn't care. You have to be man. Reach deep inside you, get the gift that God gave you, figure out what it is, and take it to the bank. Take it to the bank, make it happen. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm gonna break the paddleboard record for the third time. I paddled from Oregon to Mexico on a paddleboard, 1,250 miles in 90 days. I paddled from Key West to New York on the paddleboard, 93 days, 1,507 miles. I'm getting ready to go on my board with a stick again, and I'm gonna paddle from San Francisco to Oahu, 2,351 miles as the crow flies, not as the board wiggles. 
Four months to the day out in the open ocean, suffering like you can't comprehend for all the right reasons because we are out changing the culture to reduce the amount of garbage that we put in the environment every day. Less consumption, that's what I'm talking about. Same as the cultural change we did for cigarette smoking. Everybody thought it was cool, hip, and fun to smoke cigarettes way back when, but now it's kind of ugly. Same with the amount of trash that we're putting in the environment. We put more trash in the environment every day than the combined weight of every man, woman, and child on the planet Earth. Did you hear that? We put more garbage in the planet every day than the combined weight of every man, child, man woman, and child on this planet. I am determined to do a cultural shift to where we consume less while technology is catching up with us to take trash out of the ocean, trash out of landfills, and turn it into bioenergy. That's what I'm doing next. And most recently, with what I have for resources, I, two weeks ago, took up the entire front page of the Orange County Register business section. I have a clothing line that's in Costco right now, being sold globally. It's on Amazon right now, being sold globally, right? Because I went and I took a sport and I went to a big company and I said, this needs to be an accessory driven sport. You only sell the board and paddle once. We need to sell gloves and hats and rash guards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are businessmen that make millions of dollars a year that would love to have this right here. This would be their title belt. I got that two weeks ago. What I'm telling you here is pick something strong, stick to it, don't give up, be the men that I know that you are. Be the men that I know that you are. I challenge each and every person in this room today, each and every one of you men, I'm challenging you straight to your faces right now. I'm challenging each and every one of you to do more with your life than I've done with mine. I want to see it. You, you people are, what are you, ninth, 10th graders, 11th graders? What grade are we talking to here? Ninth graders. Okay, that's how much of a head start you guys got on me. I started in my mid-30s. You guys have a head start on me. I'm challenging each and every person in this room today to be and do more with your life and to contribute more to the world around you than I have. I'd like to, I'd like to thank Catriona Sorrell, and you should thank her too, if you like what you saw here today and you got something out of it, because she's the reason I'm here today. Thank her. She's the one that gives a rat's rump about you. She called me up and she said, Tom, will you please come down and inspire these guys? Because guess what? A lot of people are looking these guys over, and I don't think they ought to be looked over. And you know something? After sitting in this room with you, or standing in this room, and being in this room with you for the time I have, you guys are worth it. Prove to me, prove to yourself bigger that you guys are world champions too. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day. Woo! Let's give it up for Tom Jones. Raise your hand if you want to get a picture and an autograph and wear that belt. Come on down. Come see Tom. <laughs>